Assalamu alaikum guys, how are you? Here is Usama Tahir and you're watching Learn English with Usama Tahir. Yes, how's everything guys? How's your family? How's people around you? Your friends, your family members, your siblings, how are they? Okay, today we have, uh, you know, an interesting topic to discuss about psychology. Uh, now I am, you know, making videos on uh, psychological concepts and today we are going to talk about anger and its causes and how and why we get angry. Students, anger is one of the, you know, complicated emotion the human have and it has a lot of destructive functions and even if you suppress it, it's not good for your health. And if you violently express it, it's not good for the society. And if you positively express it, it's good for the society as well as for you. You cannot say that anger is negative. Anger brings reform in the society. Anger brings destruction in the society. It depends on how you use your anger and how you interpret to the situations that trigger your anger, right? So we are going to focus on the anger and its causes, the reasons of the anger, the reasons of the arousal of that emotion. Okay, this is, you can see, uh, a person is angry and how we behave normally when we get angry. So why do I get angry? Anger arises due to how we interpret things. Okay, first of all, anger is something on which... Uh, when you react to a certain situation, it is called anger. When you react in an unpleasant way, in, an, in a violent way, we call it anger. So, uh, everyone has their own weak points on which they get angry, but usually it consists of situations in which you feel, okay, normally we can't say that everyone gets angry on the same thing. For example, it is likely to be possible that you get angry on louder voices, but your brother does not. He said it's okay to have the sharp and loud and shouting voice. It's okay. And maybe it is okay for you if you call you, if someone calls you with your bad name or if someone abuse you and not okay for your brother. So it depends on the nature and the personality you have that on which situation, on what situation you are going to angry and on what situation you are going to not. So normally we have following situations on which most of the people get angry when they feel threatened or attacked. When they feel that they are in some danger or they are being attacked emotionally, physically, sexually, in any case, in any way, they get angry. Because it arises pain in them and they get angry. Frustrated or powerless. When you get frustrated, when you get, what the hell is going on? Where am I stuck? And when you feel powerless, unable to do anything, unable to do any good, you get angry. Because if you had control, why would you get angry? You, you would have just changed the situation. Next, we have like we are being invalidated or treated unfairly. When we feel that we are being treated unfairly, for example... Uh, between your siblings, you are given less priority uh, and your big brother or the younger one is given more love and priority, it will be, you know, uh, the situation in which you get very angry, you will start hate, uh, you will start to hate your brother, your parents and you get angry because in that situation you are powerless and you are feeling that something is, you know, unfair is uh, going around. So this is uh, one of the universal feeling on which normally people get angry. Like people are not respecting our feelings or possessions. Being a human, we all want to be respected. Like we all want to be respected, our feelings should be respected, our emotions, our possessions. You know what, when someone says your car is khatara, your car is not good, you get angry because it's your possession. When someone says that your, your, your father is a drunkard, you get angry because you belong to your father. When someone says your wife is not good, you get angry. So you want respect not only for yourself, but for the belongingness, for the possessions you have. So if someone attacks those feelings and disrespect your feelings and your possessions, it's likely to be for you that you will get angry. So these were few common you know, factors and the situations and the emotions that are going to evoke your feelings of anger. And pain is major cause of anger. Okay, in all of these three things, the pain is hidden. 
एंड इवन फोर्स कॉज इज पेन इज मेजर कॉज ऑफ एंगर मोर इंटेंस द पेन मोर एंग्री यू विल बी यू नो वन यू आर इन पेन यू गेट एंग्री सम मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल शो एंगर वेन दे आर इन पेन बिकॉज नो वन कैन नो वन वॉन्ट्स टू क्राई वी ऑल यू नो रन अवे फ्राम क्राइंग दैट पीपल विल कॉल वी आर कॉवर्ड बट इट्स क्राइंग इज ऑल्सो एन ह्यूमन इमोशन दैट वी रिजेक्ट एंड वी यू नो आर सोसाइटी डज नॉट एक्सेप्टेड सम हाउ और एन अदर एंड वी शो एंग इन स्टेड ऑफ क्राइंग बिकॉज वी फील पेन पेन इज पेन इज लाइक नॉर्मल फॉर अस बट वी यू नो रिफ्लेक्ट आर पेन इन एंगर नॉट इन क्राइंग सो दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम एवरी वन हैज़ देयर ओन ट्रिगर पॉइंट एज आई हैव डिस्कस दैट इट इज मे बी इट्स नॉर्मल फॉर यू to be in a situation where someone is uh, you know abusing you but not when someone is shouting or maybe your brother is okay when someone abuses him, uh, when someone shouts at him but abusing is his trigger point so it depends we all have different points and situations on which we get angry for example for someone criticism is okay and for another person maybe criticism brings a lot of anger in that person so it depends on the personality it is not necessary that everyone get angry on the same thing it varies from individual to individual for example someone is shouting at you and you get angry maybe it's possible that your brother will not get angry because loud voice is not his weak point so different stimuluses i mean stimuli sorry are the weaker points for one person or maybe these uh, stimuli is not the you know weak point of another person so it depends next we have similarly someone is calling you with bad name and you don't care about it rather laughs it doesn't mean your brother will do same your your cousin will do same it is also possible that you hate sarcasm and get angry with it no time or for someone it is normal thing to encounter with in some families sarcasm is okay it's like the normal uh, you know communicative tool and for someone sarcasm they just hate it they say what just say directly what you want to say why you're being sarcastic and for someone it's okay it depends on how your childhood was what were your past experiences and the situations happening in your life you can't find out universal situations on which human being get angry they are complicated you know so uh, as we discuss the universal situations but these were not the situation these were the emotions that uh, you know promote hate but you can't stick to the situation that this particular situation is going to make angry everyone maybe someone is going to laugh at it and someone is going to shout at it and someone is going to hit you on it so it depends next we have okay difference of opinion like that person here is saying 4 and the person here is saying 3 so both are right from one perspective if you see it's 4 from the another perspective you see it's 3 so reality can be so complex that for someone one thing is unfair and for another person it's fair and for unfair the person who thinks it's unfair will get angry or for some per- for someone the f- situation is something so annoying and disrespectful and for another person he says it's okay why are you getting angry so this is how if you like similarly you have difference of opinion the same way you will have difference in your anger and based on the situation you have your own different perspective to see and interpret situations whether to get angry or not similarly you have one person interpreted it four another person interpreted it three so similarly you can interpret a following situation maybe uh, something that you should angry on or for someone that he should not be angry on so as we said anger comes how you interpret things in certain situations now it's time to study the factors affecting our view of interpreting situations in life and these are three number now we said that everyone interpret things differently so this is the cause of anger for someone it's angry and for someone it's not so there are few you know factors on which uh, we interpret things and the first one is your childhood and upbringing your childhood experiences and the way you have been brought up Uh, is one of the major factor how you will going to interpret things i mean if your childhood was very positive if your mother and par- mother and father were in a very good relationship and you had good education and they were very kind to you and you had no sexual abuse and you had no physical abuse you will not be so much angry your trigger points will vary less and you are going to see the life positively and you should not you will not be you know you will not be getting angry over little things so if you had a very miserable life as a child your mother and father were you know 
fighting and you had physical abuse from your father, you are likely to be angry even on little tiny things. So it depends. Next we have current circumstances. If your life is having, if your life is so much stressful these days, you have problems at job with your boss, you had problems in the education, if you're a student, you're having problem in the education, you will likely to get angry on like everything. But if your current situation is like you are financially well off, you are doing good, you are good at your job, you will not get angry uh, very easily. Okay. Third is past experiences. Your past experiences, how your life was spent, how were the people around you, you know, they are going to uh, make you angry or a good person, more angry or a less angry person. So like you can see this child is getting good upbringing and here you can see the miserable condition of the child so this child will likely to be you know healthy human being than this one so this is normal childhood and upbringing it is one of the crucial factor influencing the way you interpret and react to certain situations for example you have you may have grown up thinking that it's always okay to act out your anger aggressively or violently for example in your family you see your father or your mother, you know, violently expressing their anger. You say, you understand and you interpret that it is okay to act out your anger and aggression violently. So you will likely to be aggressive in the future. And you may have been brought up to believe that you shouldn't complain and you were punished for being, you know, expressing your anger. You will try to suppress your anger even being an adult. And this will can create, uh, you know, a psychological disorder in you. And you may have witnessed your parents or other adults anger when it was out of control. I mean you may have witnessed your parents or other adults anger when it was out of control and you did see the destructive you know feature of the anger and you will try to suppress it in that situation and you will try to express it in the healthy way because you know that anger is destructive in your opinion. Next you know uh, from that picture you can see that you that that person is in between and one leg is in the future and one is in the past so you can't get rid away from the past and your future is totally interlinked with your present past and future they're like like joint together so you can't get rid of it your anger your your personality is going to be you know reflection of your past Next we have past experiences that I told you that your future and your present is totally interlinked with your past. So if you have experienced particular situations in past that made you feel angry such as abuse, trauma or bullying, you had bullying at school or being an adult and you were not able to safely express your anger at the time, you might still be coping with those angry feelings right now. I mean if something happened unfairly with you in your past and you couldn't express it you couldn't express the anger it will stay in you you know anger does not go anywhere it's just the illusion that if you just stay calm and it goes like that no express seeing your anger is essential being a psychologist psychologists say that you know you need to purify your feelings you need catharsis so you can't get rid of uh, anger like just staying quiet and you just like you forget things. No, you need to express it. And in the past, if you couldn't express it, it will going to, you know, hunt your present as well as your future. Sometimes your present feelings of anger is not about the current circumstances, but on the past feelings that you couldn't express in the past. So current circumstances as I discussed that if you're having stressful and challenging life, you will likely to get angry even on tiny things. So let's share a beautiful quote at the end of this video lecture. So these were a few causes and the factors that, you know, uh, different people interpret different situations differently. So it makes them angry or less angry or even not angry. So we have beautiful quote here is breathing techniques have helped me to control my anger. I know that if I take a moment to concentrate, concentrate on my breathing and not my anger, anger, I'll have something else to focus on. So what does it mean? It's mean that you should divert your feeling to something or to someone else. I'm not someone else, but to something else. So it is helpful. So that was all today. If you like this video, please share to your friends and comment on the video and like the video as well. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.